Testing one, two. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's give God a hand of praise this morning. God is good. Please stand for a call to worship, Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 10 in the ESV translation. Let us begin. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your health and to your produce. Then you will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Amen. Please remain standing for him. After it, we'll have a morning prayer by our, our deaconess, one of our deaconesses.
morning, church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again, Lord, for bringing us here to the house of the Lord to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord God, we want to thank you for blessing us in our homes, in our health, in our strength. Father God, we ask for your grace and your mercy. And Father God, we ask that whatever we do, do it for your glory and not for our own. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Amen. this morning. Excuse me, is there any praise dance ministry that we
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Excellent, outstanding. We serve a great God. Let's give God one more hand of praise. <laughs> Wonderful. Amen, amen. Now will you stand please for our next hymns. Heavenly Father, we know that your spirit does the work, your spirit produces the fruit, and so we pray that your spirit will teach us, not only teach us, but transform us into the image of Christ as we open your word together in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Facing a conspiracy culture facing a conspiracy culture. The culture in which we live can be defined as that of a conspiracy culture. What's a culture? It's a mindset, a way of thinking, an environment 
And so today we go all the way back to the prophet Isaiah to find out how God wants his people to face a culture of conspiracy. Isaiah chapter 8 verses 11 through 13 the Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. He said, don't call everything a conspiracy like they do. And don't live in dread of what frightens them. Make the Lord of heaven's armies, Jehovah Sabaoth, holy in your life. He is the one you should fear. He is the one who should make you tremble? Well, Isaiah's listeners would have been carried back to the history of the nation of Israel there at Mount Sinai when Moses went up on the mountain to receive the commandments. Moses said to the people, don't go up on the mountain, don't touch the mountain. No animals can even touch the mountain lest they be stoned to death. And so Moses went up the mountain and as the people observed, God manifested his presence. He descended from on high a thick dark cloud. Thunder, peals of thunder, lightning flashing, and fire and the voice of God speaking out of the fire. The people were terrified. They said to Moses, Moses, the next time God wants to say something, you go up the mountain and you talk to him and come back and tell us what he said. We don't want to go through it ever again lest we die. God said, good, Moses. What they have said is good. Why? Because now they have the right opinion of God. God placed on display his moral purity, his holiness, his omnipotence, his power so the people could see and they could understand and have the right opinion about God. So many people today just don't have the right opinion about God. So many people today think of God just like some little G God. So many today treat God with indifference. Even folk meaning well, uh, call him the pie in the sky all kind of such as that and 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 listen he's holy he's separate and distinct from his creation he operates independent of his creation he is holy god doesn't need us for anything but we need him for everything This word translated conspiracy here in the Hebrew text is defined as a binding together of people for a wicked purpose. Well, what, what is the wicked purpose? Well, they want you to think the truth is a lie and a lie is the truth. And even back in the days of the prophet Isaiah, there are those conspiracy people spreading those conspiracies. And people were becoming afraid. They were shaken up, listening to conspiracies. And so God sent a strong warning to Isaiah. And he said to the people, don't think like everyone else thinks. Don't fear what frightens them. Say, no, instead, make the Lord of heaven's army holy in your life. Have you made him holy in your life? All right, sir. 
Have you exalted God in your life? Have you separated him from everything and anything else in your life because he is holy, he is morally pure, he is all-powerful, he's all-present, he's all-knowing, and he never changes. So how do we face this conspiracy culture in our day and at the same time elevate God, have the right opinion about God so that when we face the challenges of our day, we won't be frightened by the conspiracies? Well, first... We must understand that the word of God teaches us how to think. Hmm. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't just come into the world thinking biblically. You know, you, we come into the world thinking naturally. And so a whole lot of stuff just comes natural. I know I'm right about it. You know, if you just leave babies to themselves, they'll naturally do certain things. Do I have a church? That's why we have to discipline children. Yeah. They're not going to just naturally, Mommy, may I, may I wash the dishes? <laughs> Can I clean up the room twice? Yeah. They just don't come here like that. You know, you know. And so uh, they, they require, this, and listen, discipline is a form of love. Yeah. God chastens he disciplines those whom he loves and so scripture teaches us not to despise the chastening of the lord when god gets on you, you that means you one of his children All right. if you were illegitimate he wouldn't bother with you so the word of god teaches us how to think as one thinketh so is he let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. And then Paul says to the Philippians, those things that are good, those things that are honest, those things that are good report, that are virtuous, think on these things and the God of peace will keep you. In the second letter to the Corinthians, he said, I, I have to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And then right here in Romans 12, chapter 12, verse 2, he says, be not conformed to this world, this, this culture of conspiracies. No, do, do not be conformed to this culture, but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we must train our thinking with the word of God. Yes, we have to train our thinking. I, I used to be an athlete. Now I said I used to be. I, I, decent enough, I got a scholarship. I saw I was a college level athlete and it was all about training weightlifting and running and, and, and plays and, 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 and defenses and offenses. But we practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. Why? So that when game time came, what we had practice on daily would become instinctively in the game. We wouldn't have to really think about it. It would just happen automatically. Why? Because we had trained our thinking. Yeah. They have a church. Yeah. And so we must train our thinking with the word of God. Like, how in the world can I train my thinking? Listen, if you don't train your thinking, your thinking will get the best of you. Yes, you know, I mean, you be telling yourself, I, I told myself. I knew you. Why? Because there's a whole world of thinking that goes on, and you engaged in it all day, every day, sometime into the night. 
Can't sleep. Why? Because your mind just running. And then some thought got on your mind. You couldn't get it off your mind. And you tried to, you know, drink warm milk or warm something. Trying to go to sleep, but your mind was just. So we have to train our thinking. How? By meditating on the word of God. The sweet psalmist of Israel said, I meditate on his word day and night. Why? So that I can train my thinking and I can think like the word, the word of God wants me to think. Because the second way, listen at this, the second way that we face a conspiracy culture is not only to know that we must train our thinking with the word of God, but to realize that the word of God teaches us not only how to think, but how to act. Paul says to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Now, there, there's, there's a key here in what's called the syntax of the text, how this text comes together. The letter itself is six chapters. The first three chapters, Paul gives doctrine, teaching. And then the last three chapters, four, five, and six, he moves from doctrine to duty. He's telling us something. Because right in the middle, he uses that word, therefore. In other words, when you see the word, therefore, you have to ask yourself, what is it, therefore? It refers you to what the writer has just said. Well, what did he just say? He spent three chapters talking about doctrine, teaching, and therefore, because of what I just said in these, these three chapters, here's your duty. All right. He says, your doctrine has to transition into duty. Your, your, your talking has to transition into walking. Are you still with me? Right. Teaching into doing. Otherwise, you're just a well-informed sinner. You can quote scripture, but it's not doing you any good. You don't apply any of it. Do I have a church? And so we must train our actions with the word of God. That's why the word of God must dwell within us in great abundance. Why? So that we can train our actions. We train our thinking with the word. And therefore we train our actions with the word how, by applying the word. You know it, so apply it. You got it, so do it. It's there, so trust God. You know, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, command me Walk out here on this water in this storm. Lord just said, come. <clears throat> and so he walks out there, and as long as his faith is directed at Jesus, he's walking on water. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the minute the waves started carrying on and the wind blowing and he took his eyes off, Jesus, he began, he started sinking, but he had sense enough to cry out, Lord, save me. Save me. Yes, someone needs to cry out in the midst of this culture, Lord, save me. Because we must train our actions with the word of God. And then finally, we face a conspiracy of culture by realizing that the word of God teaches us how to live. Not only how to think, not only how to act, but also how to live. How to live a godly life. Romans 1.17, Paul says, For in it, that is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith but how do you live by faith we make decisions in life based upon the word of God 
Yes. That's how we make our decisions. Not on the conspiracies, but on the word of God. And I know what you're saying. Well, Pastor, all oh, that sounds good, but have you watched the news? It looked like this thing about to fall apart. Somebody said the world is going to the dogs, but they stopped saying that out of respect for the dogs. <laughs> it's, it's rough out there. Yes, sir. What if it doesn't work? What do you mean, what if it doesn't work? That's not faith. You know what faith is? Faith is realizing that God is in control even when it looks like everything around me is out of control. That God's got a plan and a purpose for every event he allows on the planet. Even if I have a bad day, God had a purpose for every event in that day I had. Do I have a church? And so you ask, well, Pastor, what when it just looked easy? Things are really messed up. Well, the folk in Isaiah's day came to that same conclusion. God knew it. And so over in the 40th chapter, <laughs> see, this is chapter 8. God, God, God knew those folk would show up in chapter 40. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes folks say, you know, well, I'm going back because I just don't believe all of that. And so in chapter 40, God speaks to those who wants to challenge and say, well, just look at, just, you have to look at what's going on. You got to look at what's going on. And then Isaiah says, listen, chapter 40, verse, verse 28, he says, have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth, he never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. Here you are, a finite creature trying to understand an infinite God. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths, young, go, young folk will become weak and tired and, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. The syntax of the Hebrew in that verse says, but those who keep on trusting in the Lord will keep on renewing their strength. They will keep on mounting up on wings like eagles. They will keep on running and not growing weary. They will keep on walking and not fainting, even when it looks like it's all over, even when it looks like it's all done and all chaos is going on, remember that when things look like they're out of control, God is always in control. And God, listen, God has the final word in everything. Maybe there's someone here today having heard this gospel of the kingdom. Maybe you come to a decision that you need to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, we have counselors here who can help you make that decision. And maybe you hear you know Christ already. You, he's your Savior, but you're not connected to a local church, a place. Where a baptized body of believers gather and fellowship in the word. Well, if that's you as we stand, we invite you to come forward and one of our counselors will meet you and take you to a place where you can make that decision. Will you come? Will you come today? Will you come? Just as I am, I come like an empty pitcher before a fountain. I come, Lord, I come.
praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Our offertory boxes, as always, located all around the sanctuary. And we are praying that you use them before or after the service as you need to. We'll have our offertory prayer at this time. Father God, we thank you for you are the source of all our blessings. Thank you for the opportunity to gather today to return a portion of that you have blessed us with. We pray that you will continue to pour out your blessings upon your people that we may be fully equipped to do the work of the ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you're here today, and this is uh, your first time, your first timer. Give us a wave so we'll know you're a first timer. We'll do our best. We got one up front here. All right. Very good. Welcome, 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 welcome. We want you to know that even in the midst of this COVID crisis, uh, we're so glad that you are here. Amen. Uh, in the way of uh, prayer requests, we are asking for your prayers for uh, Sister Teresa Parker in the passing of her sister, I believe, out in Oklahoma. And Sister Georgia Bennett and Jordan in the passing of Sister Bennett's niece. And Michael and Mar Senior Andrews in the passing of Michael's brother David. David Andrews, we've been praying for David, but on Last night he went on to glory, so we're praying for the family. We continue to pray for Deacon Barry Davis, uh, so Sarah Smith, but so Sarah's here this morning, all right. So we're so glad that prayer is answered. Sister Alice Baker, Myrna Miles, uh, Dolores Johnson, Dolores Griffin, Loretha Mount, Ann Pinkston, and there are others. We need to keep praying one for another. And speaking of one another, uh, I need to let you know that our deacon ministry, due to health issues and such with uh, to, uh, many of them, they're not really able to function as uh, they need to. And uh, we don't uh, really have the number that we would like to have. And this is not a time that we can uh, really get into training because of uh, the pandemic. And so I'm asking you to, as I've said so many times, practice the one another ministry. In Paul's New Testament letters, probably a dozen times, he talks about one another, love one another, forgive one another, exhort one another, encourage one another, pray for one another. I'm going to add one, call one another, check on one, one another. You know, and uh, as you're uh, practicing that one another ministry, because he spoke that to the congregation. Amen? And so as we do that, and you come across a situation you think the church should be aware of or responding to, call the church office, talk to Sister Norma Jean Wallace. She's the hub, you know, and she'll make sure that we respond and, and, uh, and take care of things. But I'm depending on you uh, to do that. Uh, and, and, and if you just think about it a minute, even if you had 20 or 30 deacons and you're trying to uh, keep track of a thousand or so people, that, that's, you're asking a real a lot, especially with guys, who, uh, many of them have families, jobs, and on and on. And so I'm not making an excuse. I'm just saying this is the reality of things in a COVID environment. You say, well, Pastor, why don't you just uh, start training? Well, here's the COVID update. The uh, infection rate in the state of Florida is 20%, up from 13% last time checked. Okay, so that's not good. The CDC says anything uh, in double digits is really bad. It's, it's high risk. Okay, so we're up from 13% to 20% in the state of Florida. Uh, and over the past seven days, there were 17,000 new infections in the state of Florida. So COVID hadn't gone away. You may not be hearing about it. Uh, you know, in your circle, it may be silent. But 
uh, it's still out there and people are getting sick. And so that's why I'm not doing a whole lot of other things and why I haven't opened all the ministries up and say, y'all need to come back and we need to have small groups and do, you know, I don't want not even one person to get sick, let's mo perish from this because we are ignoring the CDC. So I get my information from uh, healthcare professionals, not politicians. And there's a big difference in what they tell you. Amen? All right, so uh, there you have it. Uh, we're so blessed this morning uh, to witness a baptism. Yeah. Now, uh, baptism in and of itself doesn't save you. Uh, you're not baptized to get saved. You're baptized because you are saved. And it's a public identification with the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're saying to the world, I belong to Christ. Amen? Amen. We have a young lady who has done so. She has placed her trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And we are blessed to witness her public declaration of faith in Christ. Take me. To the And the praise for this baptism, this young lady. Before our benediction, I want to acknowledge one card saying, feeling grateful and blessed. Thank you so much for your love and prayers. May God bless my church family. Love you, Sister Sarah Smith and family. So we take that with a blessing. Thank you. Uh, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you, Lord, for this baptism. We looked up uh, Sister Green, uh, Ruth, I mean, <laughs> Sister Green, the one that was baptized. You know her, Father God, and we just celebrate her, celebrate you, Lord, and in her. And we celebrate this family, this church family, house by house and name by name, that you will bless them exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. Cover them, Lord, with your, your blessings and your safety as we travel this world, this journey, until we make it back next week. We ask it all. Bless our pastor and his family. Bless everyone, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for our benediction, please. 
and now to him who is able to keep from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen. May God bless you. Please be safe. Thank you.